Hello, I'm Afi. I'm, uh, I've, and I've been a sysadmin and a site reliability engineer for quite a few years, and I used to be completely against testing production until I started working for the Wikimedia Foundation. But we live, we learn, and we break in production. Um, I'm going to tell you the short version of the story about how we migrated Wikipedia from HHVM to PHP 7 without most of you noticing. Some of you did notice and reported issues, and we thank you very much for it. I would also like to make a tiny disclaimer. I was not in this project from the beginning, but rather joined about halfway through. Uh, this was led by SRE, but of course it was an effort of both SRE and engineers from different teams across the organization and cross-organization. Uh, my colleague Giuseppe, who's not here today, um, put a lot of time and dedication in order to make this happen, so it was only fair to put his name up there. So, um, I'm an SRE of the Wikimedia Foundation, the nonprofit that hosts uh, and supports Wikipedia and sister projects. Our systems are running open source software, all content is managed by volunteers, and we host some really bizarre pages like lists of people who died on the toilet, or, lists of, or a 10,000 word talk page about aluminium versus aluminium. <laughs> this is true, I'm not joking. <laughs> Um, we are running one of the top 10 websites over the internet, and which comes with many challenges. Um, which brings us to how do we simulate this volume and kind of traffic in a controlled environment in order to catch issues early on. This is not cheap in terms of um, both hardware and human capital. And being a small nonprofit, our resources and with and without resource, our, our resources, it doesn't look like this is an option. And even if it was one, we would still have to test production because no matter how good you are at testing your changes before uh, rolling them out in production, uh, you, will never, you will never cover all the crazy ways your users find to break production or find that something is broken. So our core software is MediaWiki. Uh, which is an 18-year-old Apache PHP MySQL application. And around MediaWiki, there's a very thick caching layer. In other words, when you're requesting something, um, it, when you're requesting an article, we will check a number of caches to find if we already have rendered it and serve it to you. And if not, we will have MediaWiki render it for you and then cache it and serve it back. Moreover, when you're editing an article, uh, or uploading media, you're again making requests um, to, the, to MediaWiki. So it is the most important thing of our, in, of our infrastructure. Of course, we have many microservices supporting it, but this is special to us. Uh, we have three types of clusters that run MediaWiki. The, uh, the app servers, uh, which serve uh, web requests, the API that serves API, and the job runners uh, slash video scalers, uh, which run and sync jobs like video, like video encoding. Around 2014, we started uh, using HHBM instead of mod PHP on Apache. HHBM, which is a hip hop uh, virtual machine, is developed by Facebook, and it is to PHP what the JVM is to Java. It converts, it converts PHP code to bytecode, and that code is in turn translated into machine code, and it's executed. Um, the reason we switched to, sorry, the reason we switched to HHBM uh, was simply that it performed better back then. And over time, we learned to manage HHBM's um, weaknesses, and we were happy with its uh, strengths. And life was good until September 18, 2017, when Facebook announced that future versions of, uh, of HHBM will, keep, will drop PHP and will never be PHP 7 compatible. And we were running HP, PHP 5 at the time, but we would eventually migrate to PHP 7. Now, if you're wondering what happened to PHP 6, it's the same thing that happened to TCP version 5. No one knows. Um, lucky for us, early performance tests we, didn't, we ran back then, back then uh, showed that the improvements in PHP 7 itself and the use of PHP FPM would provide us with equal uh, or even better performance for our workload. Now, uh, PHP 7, uh, PHP FPM, is the PHP Fast CGI Process Manager. It enables uh, PHP scripts to make better use of server resources without the additional overhead uh, from running from within uh, inside the web server. 
PHPFPM can reuse worker processes instead of having to create and terminate them for every single PHP request. Uh, the, large, the largest performance improvement that comes, it comes from enabling um, opcode caching. With opcode caching, um, the resulting opcode from compiled PHP scripts, it gets cached into memory. So we had a really wrong and long and winding road ahead of us to both migrate from PHP 5 to PHP 7, from PHP FPM to HH, from HHVM to PHP FPM, while serving 100,000 requests per second and 17 billion page views per month. So what could go wrong? To be fair, PHP 5 code can run on PHP 7. There were, of course, some backward incompatible changes, but since we're SREs, we didn't deal with that. <laughs> but we rather uh, rolled out PHP to production. So our clusters run uh, Apache and PHP. Our first, steps, our first step was to install uh, PHP FPM on all servers, where PHP would continue to listen on localhost 9000, and PHP FPM would be listening on a Unix socket. So in order to be able to route traffic to PHP 7, we surprisingly used a cookie. If the PHP cookie was present, Apache would rather request PHP 7. Obviously, we wanted to push live traffic to PHP, to PHP 7, uh, but to keep the blast radius to a minimum on every step of the way. Uh, when we're, so when we are making groundbreaking changes in our production like this, we can count on two things. The Wikimedia, deba the Wikimedia debug browser extension, which, run, which is from, for Chrome and Firefox, um, which is our number one help when testing in production. By using this extension, uh, we are able to, uh, to route requests to specific debug servers from our browser. But we can also add experimental features like injecting the PHP 7 cookie. The second thing we can count on are beta users. They are logged in users who have enabled or beta features. Uh, we are grateful to them because they usually catch issues and report them, and that help is priceless. On the other hand, they are, on the other hand, they are guinea pigs. So our initial testing would get feedback from, from two inputs, people who are using the extension and beta users. There are there are a couple of more things that we took care of in order to make this experiment work. Configure CI to test everything against PHP 7 as well. And observability, which means metrics, graphs, centralized logging, along with some transitional graphs like how much traffic we're pushing, uh, to PHP, we're pushing on PHP 7. Now, there was a problem of, though with this approach. As I said before, there is a very thick caching layer in front of MediaWiki. And since, since we are caching URLs, there was a chance that a user with a PHP 7 cookie would get a cached page that was rendered by HHBM. So it kind of beats the purpose. As a result, we needed to tell our caches to cache separately URLs where the PHP cookie was present and when it wasn't. Now, so PHP 7 was serving a few users. Our cache was serving them well. We had observability and Everything was in place. We found a few issues, we fixed a few bugs, and we moved to the next phase. Now, we needed to start sending a few anonymous users this time to PHP 7. Uh, we, added in an uh, we added an application variable where we could control the probability of a user getting the PHP 7 cookie without knowing, which would uh, expire after a week. With that setting, we could uh, claim that we are pushing 1% or 0.1% of anonymous traffic to PHP 7. That was not entirely true because not all our users or not all our serve or not all devices support or accept cookies. As you can imagine, the more traffic we pushed, the more issues would surface, which sometimes would even affect our morale, like PHP opcache corruption. The thing that was making PHP 7 perform better was being corrupted from time to time. Um, fighting our way around those, we finally made it to about 20, or to be more precise, so-and-so 20% of traffic. And now, at this point, our goal was to push traffic to the, to the app servers. 
and so, but also to get ready for the next steps. The API servers. The API servers and the application servers share the same Apache configuration. In a similar manner that some app, ser app server clients don't accept cookies, there were a few API clients that did. So those clients had the same probability of getting the PHP cookie. In order to push more traffic to the API clients, we would have to start converting API servers to run only PHP 7. Uh, we're using Puppet to provision our, ser our servers, so we introduced the PHP 7 only flag. If a server had this flag enabled, uh, it would get a different Apache configuration and it would only serve from uh, using PHP 7. Each API server serves about 2% of API traffic, so we had a rough estimate of the amount of traffic we were pushing there. We migrated a few servers, things were looking, things actually went well here, and we moved on to the job runners. Now, um, we have a few dozens of async jobs that we send to the job runners, like sending notification emails or update caching uh, or update uh, caches for specific URLs. After switching all jobs in our staging cluster, we moved to production. We had to switch first the higher traffic jobs, the jobs that run all the time, one by one and carefully. And after that, we, we, we continued with the lower traffic ones. And after we were at about 50%, uh, fifth, uh, sorry, 50% we switched the rest, of, the rest of them in one go. Switching jobs went also surprisingly well. We, we were stunned as well. Um, at this point, we enabled the PHP only flags flag on all job runners. Now, finishing up, when we had all job runners converted to PHP 7, about 30% of API traffic, a 30% of our web traffic being served by PHP 7, we were confident enough to continue converting servers faster. And that's what had actually happened. Within two days, we converted all API servers from 30% to 100%, to 100%. And the same for the app servers. And that was it. In September, we got a 15-month pro uh, project to the finish line within two days, and no servers were hurt in the meantime. Right now, we are, of course, reverting all the transitional changes that we have been doing all this time. And <laughs> like different caches, uh, Puppet features, HHBM code in Puppet. But it is easier to remove stuff if that thing is not working anymore either way. I omitted getting into every single detail we'll run into and every single issue or the shameful, th the shameful things we had to do in order to proceed with this project. But I tell you, each time we, were, we thought we were getting closer, each time we'd find another roadblock and another one and another one after it. And it was a really long migration that wouldn't be possible without the hard, the hard cross team work, without testing production, and of course the help of the community and a friendly message from our sponsors. Thank you very much. <laughs>